What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name's Seth and today I'm going to be showing you some behind the scenes of what I do with editing and rendering. I'm not going to be going too in depth about what my specific settings are because I kind of want you all to be able to do it for yourself, but I am going to still show you some tricks that I've learned over time that hopefully are going to help some people out. So first of all, this is my Adobe folder and in it I have a text document that has volume levels depending on each game because when I I'm using Bandicam, I can adjust the game volume accordingly. So in here, it'll have like Elder Scrolls Online is minus two game volume. Sky Saga is minus four or minus two, depending. Splatoon is uh, plus four and stuff like that. Uh, you're also going to notice all of these base files and stuff like that. I have a lot of projects running right now. Actually, most of these are from uh, files that I have in media encoder, which is getting ready to render. But for today, let's just open up a Terraria base right here. And I'm just going to show you this right here. I know it looks a little bit ridiculous, but that is because these are just basic files just so that I can have specific settings. Now, the reason that I end up saving these base files is because it gives me the opportunity to have all of my settings pre-made. So for example, right here, this is going to be the clip that will end up being the Terraria clip. And so it's got brightness and contrasting 15 and 13 because that is what I use on my Terraria footage. Now I will go over here and I will save an alternate version of this. I will actually call it Terraria 2 so I don't save over my project that I'm working on right now. And then I will go over to the media browser. Whoops, not my C, it's on my D. Bandicam footage, bring that sucker out, go to Terraria, search for it. It's going to take a little bit for it to actually process right here. But as soon as it does, you're going to see that this is actually one piece of Terraria footage right here. So I drag and drop that over here. I have to unlink both of these files because otherwise the audio, which isn't anything actually, uh, is going to be connected to the video. This actually just ha happens with Bandicam. It's just, there's no real way around it. So I just delete that track and then I bring in a WAV file that I've already edited in Adobe or not Adobe in Audacity. So I will actually show you that right now is what I end up doing for my audio settings. This is actually something that I've been doing recently. So it may end up changing very, very quickly as I kind of get more control over stuff like this. But anyway, I will open up my first WAV file and this is my audio track without any raw settings and stuff like that. I'll usually zoom in on the beginning right here and select a little bit of audio just so that we can kind of get a noise removal and get noise profile. Now what this is doing is it is selecting this area and we're telling the program that we don't want anything that is below this volume to ever appear again. So I just hit control A to select the entire clip and then I go to noise removal again. This time I click OK and now after a little bit of processing right here, you can notice on these little ends right here that the audio is actually going to go down a little bit. Uh, not not in some cases, you want to be very careful with that one because if we would select this, for example, it would pretty much mute the entire clip. And then next we want to just normalize and I just have it go to minus one dB, which is default, which that is kind of gain the volume to be not as clippy. And then the compressor, which I just have at the default settings. I know I'm going to have to mess with this one a little bit more though, because I, it's giving me a bit of trouble. But what the compressor is doing is it's kind of putting everything, it's compressing the audio. It's putting it through a tube. <laughs> and then we're going to put the equalization on which I have my own custom settings right here. You're going to have to mess with it yourself to figure out something that is going to work for you. The good thing about Audacity is even if you shut the program down and restart your computer, it's going to save all these settings. So what this is actually doing is mostly bringing up the bass that is what you're naturally going to hear in my voice. Now normally I would uh, render this out, but we already have that clip set up and I usually just put an F at the end of the WAV file as you can see right there. Anyway, I drag that in, drop it there, and then this is the next audio track, which is the game audio track, uh, and then I will bring in the webcam, and as you can kind of see right here, it's, uh, you know, it's all the green screen stuff like that. That is where these presets come in, because I'm not going to show you everything that I have specifically, but I, you know, just copy and paste all of these over to this file clip, and then usually I will have to adapt it accordingly. I don't know why I didn't copy the brightness and contrast. 
which I'm going to have to make sure is up at the top there so it doesn't give me trouble. Uh, now, sometimes I will run into parts in the clip where it gets a little bit of trouble with like chroma keying and stuff. Sometimes I'll run into artifacts like this. And I mean, I can't really go into in depth about that kind of stuff because that is something that you're going to have to learn for yourself. Like right here, you can kind of see the blue on my shirt is actually having a little bit of trouble. You can actually see the white silhouette is what is on camera. The black is what is edited out. So you can see right here that a part of my ship is or shirt is actually not showing up, which I'm not going to take care of that right now because I don't really want to do that on camera. Uh, now right here, this is something that you're going to have to do if you're using a separate camcorder or something like that. This is so that you can sync up the audio and normally I would listen to the clip right here. Oops, I had it muted. And I get it right, right there on, on the mark, right on the mark as soon as the audio kicks in and then I adjust it accordingly. Now, bam, it should all sync up as soon as the video is going. Trap door, by the way, but we ran into this. And I may end up having to uh, mute this so maybe you won't even hear the clap, but either way, it is something that is very good for the visuals and stuff like that. Now, of course, uh, normally I would cut the video and I would have like for the intro, maybe, you know, something like this just with the default settings where, hey, everybody, what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. And then I shrink down into my little corner. Uh, of course, another thing too that I always do on my audio track is I always put a de on and I always boost my uh, audio up by four decibels. And that's just because of the mic settings that I have and everything like that. Like I said, I am still trying to work on getting my sound quality up. Now, this right here is the outro that I have already pre-rendered and it's beautiful. So I just cut that, bring it to the end. Let's just say that this is the end of the video right here where I'm I'm sitting here talking about you know smack the like button and all that stuff so another clip that I bring up this is so that I just kind of a thing that I do where it's like I feel like this is a good way of interacting with the audience and stuff like that so anyway normally I will drag over this clip right here and this is actually the audio track for the outro so I will try and sync up and see whether or not it is conflicting with something that has to be heard in game but with Terraria it's usually pretty good so anyway we will actually go to the beginning over here and if we drag this uh, webcam track up once and then I drag the whole thing over because I already have everything all set up like I keep saying and now we can actually go up over here normally I use end but that's also my record button so now we can actually go over here and you see that we've got like right here this is my click here and next episode thing uh, and then this is the like button which I already have rendered out and of course because it's a preset uh, because sometimes I'll have this inverted like I have two versions of this one that goes on the left side and one that goes on the right so anyway now what I would normally do is for something like this I would drag and drop myself over top the bottom track so that this which is actually going to be the background uh, I'll get rid of that and then it just fades out goes to the outro and now I would normally render it I mean of course I would have it a bit more under control and everything like that so now what I would do Adobe here here's a secret that I've learned Adobe is a pretty crappy program in some regards like it's got a lot of limitations and it takes a very it has a very long learning curve because I mean it calls things like I mean just just looking through like the video effects and everything like that it has such a unique and weird way of naming things that no other software does so it kind of just does its own thing and unfortunately with every single version of Adobe it pretty much renames almost everything so I'm actually using Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 and I don't plan on ever upgrading because you don't really need to especially for just YouTube and stuff like that so anyway normally I would actually render out a wave audio track and the reason that I do this is because Adobe has problems where double click there so it selects the whole clip by the way uh, Adobe has problems where if there is a third audio track it will sometimes mute this track or the second one or the third. It just seems to have a lot of trouble with three audio tracks. I have no idea why, but there doesn't seem to be any fix to it. So anyway, normally I would render out a wave audio file right there. 
and then I would go into here grab this one just because uh, this is from a different project but normally I would drag it in here mute the two top tracks and then leave the bottom one going just double check and make sure that everything works and then it's on to rendering now what I do for my rendering is you always want to use the h264 that is the format that pretty much is recognized throughout all editing software worldwide and also is kind of what YouTube uses so it's a bit good so it's like really good for like uh, um, uploading and stuff like that now I've actually already got a YouTube preset right here but I will actually show you all this because it's it's pretty good it seems to be working out for me I'm still working with all of this stuff like I said so I'm sure that my settings are going to change over time now they do if you don't want to actually do custom settings and stuff like that you can actually scroll down to the bottom and find YouTube 1080p 720 480 etc etc the biggest thing that you're trying to do is this source clip right here is actually the source clip so that is what the file is like without any editing and you're trying to get your output which is the one that's rendering out as close to it as possible so you're going to notice that most if not all these settings are the exact same i have the same frame rate uh if we scroll down here one of the big things that you're going to want to do is you're going to change this profile to high if it isn't already and change the audio leveling is that audio no that's not audio uh but you're going to want to change that to 4.2 click on this render at maximum depth now be careful with this because if you don't have a good computer this is going to make rendering time horrendous uh you know i only recently discovered that i could actually render with my video cards so rendering has been a lot faster for me and then for the bit rate now this is one of the most difficult parts that you can ever run into and i found it very very hard to find any info about this online but the general consensus that I could find is 10 and 15 between 10 and 15 the only thing that I am potentially going to change this is your target bitrate and this is your maximum so it's kind of like it has a bit of a gate to itself uh, but it of course as you can see right here a 20 minute video is going to end up being uh, 1.3 gigabytes so you gonna have to have the hard drive space if you're rendering out this type of quality now I eventually am probably going to change it so that even my basic one is 15 and you see that bumps the video up to two gigs so I'm still messing with it I do like the video file size being a little bit smaller so that's kind of why I haven't bumped it up to 15 yet anyway you're gonna want also mat render at maximum quality use render <laughs> This right here, you're gonna want to click that one. And then, as for the audio, you're probably not going to need to change anything. AAC, the sample rate can be rendered out at 4800, but you don't really need to. You can actually render it out at 44100 because this is actually the uh, pretty much the audio level that our ears like the human ear can hear up to nobody alive can hear up to 4800 everybody will say that they can but they actually can't like that is just a trick a, even in the industry so many people have been tricked by thinking that oh you know more numbers means it's better but the human ear can only hear up to 44100 so that's all you're gonna need and I know all of this stuff from being a musician so that's why I kind of have an idea and a bit of an understanding with all this audio stuff now the other thing thing too is the bit rate setting bit rate settings you're never near again go any faster or any higher than 192 unless you're like crazy into your audio and stuff like that then you might want to boost it up but that depends how many settings you you have with your mic and everything like that because I, I just have very basic settings just kind of you know get it done so anyway then normally you can click export and it would either dominate Adobe so you can never do anything outside of it or you can click QU and and this will actually export it into uh, Adobe Media Encoder and this thing is a lifesaver because I actually have like as you can see here I have a whole bunch of videos right here that I'm going to start rendering so I'm actually gonna get rid of this bottom one uh, but anyway so I have like Witcher and Trove and stuff like that and most of these take quite a bit of rendering time so usually I'll leave this on while I'm either recording minor videos like this or I'm going to bed but anyway that's pretty much it ladies and gentlemen another small tip that I just want to say about this is actually if you click in this box and click control s you can close media encoder and even restart your computer and then the next time that you open up media encoder it will have all of these project files set up but if you don't save it again then it will remove them but anyway that's it for today ladies and gentlemen i hope you found this video helpful and i'm looking forward to seeing everybody else's content out there so thanks so much for watching don't forget to smack that like button share favorite and subscribe to join team pixel sign on and stay epic everybody